And it's been quite a month. And in fact, uh, for Ghostbusters, it's been probably quite a past two weeks. So going back as far as the 27th, as many of you know, uh, HasLab announced the Two in a Box campaign. So they are bringing us a PKE meter with real EMF detection and a ghost trap, all of which are scanned from props from Afterlife. So this is essentially trying to complete the set of Proton Pack, Wand, PKE, Ghost Trap, everything you need for your ghost busting needs. That was teased and then finally revealed on the uh, 27th, I believe. And then we had Halloween, of course, which was big this year because I can't tell you the number of between all the groups uh, out there, costuming groups related to Ghostbusters, everyone wearing their new HasLab packs for the first time. Uh, for, for many, it was the first time probably. Uh, winning costume contests left and right, so that is awesome to hear and see. Uh, see what else. Uh, yeah, as part of that, we um, October was busy. Uh, Michael, GP Star, and Jonathan were busy with getting kits out the door uh, from the from late September through most of, uh, most of October, really. Uh, and then there were some hangups with customs. Parts weren't getting where they need to go. That should be resolved shortly at the time of uh, recording this. Uh, I don't have the insight into the logistics other than what they are able to uh, tell the group. So if you haven't received your GP Star Kit yet, hang tight. They are absolutely working on it. It's been a struggle repeatedly with customs, apparently, that suddenly uh, stuff getting held up. Anyways, the the work continues, though. Michael right now is uh, busy putting the fin final touches on a very, very big update. Uh, this is going to bring a deeper EEPROM menu, so there's going to be a lot more features that can be configured uh, in the device through the EEPROM menu. There is also, of course, getting ready for the next movie, and that's the other big thing that hit this past week. We, of course, got our first teaser trailer for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Uh, needless to say, the community obviously jumped on that immediately, and we're scanning for every little bit of information that they can glean out of that trailer for uh, new mods to the pack, new functionality, new behavior. We were likewise looking at it for the same reasons to see, is there anything that's going to be coming that we need to be aware of now and start working on? Short answer is probably a little too soon to tell. Uh, the trailer didn't reveal that much about the about the uh, equipment other than we could very obviously spot HasLab packs were probably being used uh, based on uh, Phoebe wearing uh, straps that look like the stock HasLab straps, not Alice frame pack straps. Uh, these are the little details that um, <laughs> that I absolutely love that the community will dive into and be able to point out. And, of course, a lot of research on those red jackets. Uh, of course, here in Georgia, that's... Uh, while we'd love to have them, we will... We have, like, one day where we can wear something like that and not be sweating. The other big thing is the the changes to the bumper and some of the other uh, parts on the Proton Pack. But getting back to the GP Star Kit, of course we are, uh, Michael is right now preparing in that update, there will be placeholders for the forthcoming movie. So when and if we have uh, new functionality to add, he will have a place all ready to go. The theme is uh, going to be in there, so it'll be selectable. Uh, but for right now, best we can tell is everything's going to be based on afterlife, uh, lights and sound. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been uh, a lot of the work going on behind the scenes. We've got the movie uh, trailer. Oh, and of course, right after the trailer dropped, pretty much, uh, I think that evening, we, uh, if you follow the news here in the U.S., uh, SAG-AFTRA had been on strike for, I think, over 100 days, 117, 118 days. Uh, they finally reached a tentative deal with AMPTP. I think I got that right. Uh, and I think as of yesterday, the strike is officially over. And so with the SAG-AFTRA uh, no longer on strike, 
it is now possible for them to uh, begin talking about uh, movies and other productions uh, that were formerly property of Strut companies, notably being Sony. And we got a very big drop from a foreign vlogger who uh, obviously recorded uh, their segment back in July and probably would have uh, had this coincide with the movie's release in uh, December had it not been moved. And so that gave us another good look at all of the packs and new equipment, potentially, uh, that we will see in the movie. So yeah, big news. The So the HasLab drop, Halloween was big for a lot of Ghostbusters. Uh, we got the movie trailer, or at least the um, uh, very good teaser for it. The Hollywood strike is over, so writers are back, actors are back. Uh, that probably means the floodgates are open or opening, and we will have a lot more content uh, in the next few months because, yeah, we are less than six months, probably uh, less than five months at this point from the new movie. So anyways, lots and lots going on. This is obviously a really exciting time, and I'm going to make it even more excited. So let me get down to business here. What you see before me uh, is basically my test rig. This is um, old HasLab equipment. Yes, uh, just uh, taped to a cardboard cardboard box top. Uh, really fancy here. Uh, the only thing I've done was uh, 3D print a, a way for me to hold all of the switches in the right orientation so I can basically, this is my mock-up of the wand, so I can turn things on, I can interact, I can basically test the features for the pack and the wand. Uh, Michael has a very similar setup uh, on his workbench. He's got his pack, but he also has uh, uh, test setup. So yeah, for, for many of us working on the electronic side of things, we, we have probably bought the parts for this thing, uh, three or four times over at this point. Um, a lot of components, uh, going into this and one in particular that I want to talk about. And that is, uh, of course I'm continuing work on the attenuator and we're about to make a rather large change. And this is kind of why the attenuator has not been put out there uh, as an official kit, per se, and that is because we were about to change the brain. So I started mucking around with one of these. This is a ESP32, uh, and a lot of the controllers, we started with the Arduino Nano for the wand and a um, Arduino Mega 2560 for the pack. By the time we uh, got further along with uh, making the schematics and everything, John and Michael had worked on uh, schematics for actual printed circuit boards, and that's, of course, what we have here. And both the wand and the pack got a uh, AT Mega chip to boost their hardware uh, capabilities. And I had started working on the attenuator. Uh, here's actually the, I've removed it from my pack for more on that in a moment. Uh, so I'd started working on my prototype back in August, or yeah, late August, just in time for Dragon Con, and that was using an Arduino Nano. Well, the Arduino Nano is fine and good, but I really wanted to try something new, and this was, this was of course, another highly popular board, and that's, uh, like I said, ESP32. This is an ESP Room32, that's W-R-O-O-M. This is a dual core chip as opposed to the single core that is the Nano. Uh, it has probably just as many GPIO pins, but what it really has that's that's really cool for what I'm about to go into is has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but mostly the Wi-Fi. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, why we switched to this, and just for sake of demonstration. Uh, the other nice thing is you can buy these easily on uh, Amazon. I got a pair for, I think, uh, 18 bucks. They're relatively inexpensive. They're even cheaper if you get them off of somewhere like uh, AliExpress. Uh, <clears throat> this particular setup had, gave me two of these and two of these, so solderless breadboard. Uh, if you are at all familiar with the the GP Star Kit. We're we're big fans of terminal blocks because we know not everybody likes to solder or can solder. So this just presses right in and gives you a place to connect all of your uh, devices. So 
I'll get more into this in a few minutes. What I want to show is, so this is, this is the new attenuator. Uh, this is the new hardware. So I've got the new controller chip here. I've got a little breadboard here uh, because I needed to add a few resistors and other components. And that drives uh, things like the piezo buzzer. Uh, this is a, a tiny little vibration motor. I covered a lot of this in a video from uh, October. Fruto bar graph that is also connected. Um, I got some fancier switches. These are flat paddle as opposed to these, which uh, I didn't think that these existed, but uh, sure enough, you can find these quite easily on Amazon. So uh, we're probably gonna be adding this to the list of uh, materials. This is the same type of toggle switch I was using before. Yeah, exactly the same, uh, but it's pre-soldered, which makes it really nice. And with the bare ends, makes it a cinch to uh, screw down into one of these terminal blocks. So that's uh, that's some changes that we've made on the uh, parts list to try and make this easier to uh, build out. So yeah, having the, the new controller gives me the ability to do Wi-Fi. And why do I bring that up? Because you can do things like this. And pardon me, I'm, I'm on my phone. Do, do, do. See if we can uh, show this real quick. So, Proton Pack. Yes, that's exactly what you think. Uh, so, basically, I can connect to this device using basically, it is running its own Wi Fi network. So, it has its own IP address, uh, static IP, uh, for those savvy with networking. So, that IP address stays constant. And anytime I connect a device, whether it's my uh, phone or a laptop or an iPad, that was why I looked at using this chip. Wi-Fi is fairly ubiquitous. It's very easy to set up in this uh, environment. And I'm thinking about this from the perspective of uh, multiple people using these kits in a confined or uh, close area, say a convention. And so I've been examining the software and setting that up in a way that makes sense for uh, not mass producing devices, but uh, having multiple kits out there. So if you had multiple proton packs or multiple um, people in the same area with the kit. Anyways, the so everything from the Wi-Fi network name is tied to the uh, device information. So every device should get a unique or generate a unique Wi-Fi uh, network. But here's the really cool thing. That's a web page that shows you the current status of the pack. And if you watch closely, so if you look at the Neutrona wand status, you'll see it change from idle to firing. And just to show you how this is real time, as I change the power level, Watch how quickly, as every time I change, oops, every time I change. So essentially what I'm doing is anything that the pack or that the attenuator gets as far as information from the pack, I have access to that through this web interface. I can display it in real time. This is using web sockets for those who are curious. So basically the, uh, ESP32 is running its own access point, it's running its own web server, it's running its own WebSocket server, and the web page, when it loads up, creates a WebSocket and is able to get instant data from, so I'm pushing the data from the attenuator out to the web interface. And of course, you already see this at the bottom of the screen, but audio controls, yes, I have, again, anything the attenuator could have done I can do in software. So what I did is put in uh, master volume controls, music playback controls, and effects volume. So theoretically, and I haven't tested this with my pack yet, but it should work, change the volume up and down. You can skip and move to other uh, music tracks. I am working on, there will be essentially a jukebox mode. You'll be able to select a music track and jump to a specific track. We don't, we can't get the names of the tracks, but we know the numbers. 
And so you'll be able to select a specific track and jump to it. And of course, here's the cool part. So let's, you know this is coming. So let's shut everything down. Let the, so cyclotron spinning down. So everything's off. See if I can do this in reverse. So I just turned the pack on using the web interface. So if you didn't think that was coming, yeah, it's there. So there will be pack controls. Uh, right now you can turn the pack on or off. Uh, there's a cancel button. Basically that's the same as the feature I showed you where um, when you go into the overheat phase, the pack can, um, or the attenuator can, the dial can be turned to essentially cancel the overheat. In fact, let's show that. I will go, so I'm back up to firing a proton stream at level five. So as I want to press and hold, we're firing. There's my warning. There I go. I hit the cancel button and it cancels the overheat. So it's essentially the same thing. Same thing as turning the dial on the device. Uh, some other things that are going on here is lots of status changes. So when you see, so it's firing. If you watch down here, the cyclotron and the overheat state. Goes from active to warning, critical. And then when it reaches the venting stage, Cyclotron goes into recovery is what just the name I chose for it. And then it's venting. And then everything back to normal. So again, real-time communication. Uh, it's basically getting its cues from the pack. Translates a lot of um, uh, states which are represented as just uh, ones, zeros, and true-false flags into more uh, user-friendly values. And that is, that's the big, big, big change here. All right, so what else do I want to show? Uh, we've got, yeah, so we've got the Wi-Fi working. We've got real-time status updates. We've got a web page that is tied to this. Ah, another piece of security. So change, change Wi-Fi password. Yes, uh, another aspect that I've been looking at again, to make sure that this is usable in a uh, broader environment. Not only will you have your own dedicated wireless access point, but you can, of course, change it from the default password. Default is basically the Ghostbusters phone number, so the 555-2386. Uh, so, I mean, who are you going to call? That's your default password, and then you'll, you'll come in here and be able to set your own password update, and then now your pack or this this particular setup is yours and uh, secured to you. <sighs> yeah, lots of big changes. Um, but wait, there's more. And there's one more thing I want to show. And that's, remember this little device here? So, all right. So I've got this device connected. This is an exact copy of the, the other ESP32, but I've got two. The green light came on and it's red or uh, white down here. Yes. So I'm pressing the firing button. In fact, I'm going to try to do this with, wish I had, let's see if we can get this to show on camera. Just pardon me. Yeah. So watch the light down here. Watch the status on the phone. Essentially, what I'm working on, and this is very experimental at this point, but this was a proof of concept. This is acting as a, um, a paired device. It is a client to the attenuator uh, controller. So what I can do with this, obviously, is I get data from... The pack goes to the attenuator. The attenuator is running its own Wi-Fi hotspot, essentially. I can have multiple devices, my phone and other devices acting as a client and joining that Wi-Fi hotspot. They're getting their own IP addresses. They know what IP address this is. They basically talk back to it and say, all right, 
I'm, hey, I'm here. And I'm able, once this knows that it has clients connected, can push the data out. I know I'm oversimplifying it this, this and anyone who's in IT and software is probably screaming at me right now. Um, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. But this is, this is essentially a WebSocket client, which means I get the real-time information. And so wouldn't it be cool if you just happen to have a device that is paired to your pack and knows what the pack is doing and you could trigger other behaviors. I'm not saying what that's going to lead to, but it's a good start. Let's just put it that way. All right. So that's, I know that is a lot. Um, hopefully that gets you excited for what's coming and I'm pretty much going to end the video uh, shortly. That's that's the main thing I wanted to capture in this uh, in this session, because what I'm going to do next is, yeah, we have this was the prototype. Here's the other thing that we've been working on. Was Michael said, what if we could print the um, attenuator in metal? So this arrived from a manufacturer in China who does 3D printing similar to Shapeways here in the U.S., but they offer aluminum printing. So this is a sintered uh, aluminum powder, I'm guessing. That is, that is metal. So, like, it is solid metal. Um, I'm not exactly putting it through a stress test, or anything like that, but everything looks beautiful. See, I've already weathered this. This is ready to go. The next video I should have, uh, should start working on is going to uh, be putting these components into this new shell. And it's, um, it comes, it does come unpainted, of course. Uh, it was completely flat. I've already, like I said, I sanded it, painted it, um, did the chipped paint effect. No rub and buff here, and that looks beautiful because I'm actually kind of happy with the way that the uh, the rust effects uh, came out on that. So now we have a weathered um, weathered metal enclosure, and I have. Let's see if I can do this. I've been doing some tests. Uh, I was I was initially concerned with whether or not you know putting an aluminum shell over the uh, the Wi-Fi access point. <laughs> would would impact it it really doesn't uh it does cut the it does cut the transmit power a little bit but that just for me that's walking up to the second floor of my house and it, it drops significantly but in the same room works great no no problems no noticeable degradation so i think that's a clean bill of health in terms of uh this not being um a hindrance to that new functionality. So yeah, next video will show putting all that together. And what else do I want to show? Um, ah, so the, I'm going to go through, I'm aiming to go through everything. I want to show putting every component into this. So I've got everything pretty much ready to go here. Um, so all my components, everything's pretty much soldered, connected, ready to be put into this into this device. I have all my wires and uh, cable sheaths and everything, my strain boot, uh, strain relief boot here, all the parts ready to go. I'm going to cover the process of connecting everything. Uh, that includes the um, four pin connector that we or that I had chosen for this particular project. And I, I'm just happy that if this doesn't look familiar, this is a four pin version of the three pin that it looks like HasLab currently shows uh, in war in action with the new Ghost Trap. So they were smart and followed probably the same th train of thought I had, which was this whole thing looks like it's cobbled together from surplus military. This is an aviation connector. Uh, the pins, pins connect relatively, uh, securely and they have a nice positive lock to keep that connector closed. Uh, 
there's a good bit of bite in here. Uh, I've got wire thick enough that this clamps down pretty good. So if HasLab is using this part, we should have a lot better result from, as they, they were kind of beating around the bush, but kind of said, yeah, they realized that uh, maybe some connections were not as strong as they could have been. So they have fixed that in this design and you're using probably a much stronger uh, component. All right, so that's it. We've got wireless capabilities uh, that are possible in the attenuator. We have wireless client capabilities that are potentially possible with other, other devices. And one other, f I know, I keep saying one more thing. Uh, one other thing that we are looking at, and that is uh, Michael had the brilliant idea of what if, what if we just put one of these uh, ESP32s into the pack, connect it, and just have the wireless capabilities plus the web interface for the pack. So if you were to order a pair of these uh, from Amazon, uh, as well as a few other parts, you could very easily connect it directly into the expansion port that is already part of the controller. Uh, it's it's a pin that's been here all along. Uh, so all of the devices that have been uh, purchased and shipped, they all have this. And it's basically two plugs, power and serial connection. And if you were to throw this in your pack, you would instantly have wireless uh, abilities. So I am going to be writing up some distinct instructions for that. It'll essentially be a scaled down version of the attenuator software, if not the same attenuator software. The only difference is you won't have lights, you won't have uh, any of the input devices, but that's fine. Uh, it's basically then just be acting as a wireless uh, transmitter. And that will be, yeah, I think that, uh, <laughs> I expect a lot of folks to probably be uh, happy with that, uh, being able to control their pack remotely. Uh, using standard technology, your own cell phone is a is a great uh, great way to do that. I've got a shortcut a bookmark on my home screen, so I just Proton Pack, and it takes me right to the web interface, and I can start managing uh, same behavior that the that the attenuator does. And yes, we are we are already talking about potentially putting some of the EEPROM menu options into that web interface. So the next release is going to, it's going to go deep. There's going to be multiple sub, -le sub menu levels uh, in order to change some of the options. And so it may be, it may be beneficial uh, for some people to say, I just want to use the, I just want to use a web interface on my phone and, you know, slide toggle switches on and off and set my preferences and just hit one button that sends it all back to the pack and tells the pack, update the EEPROM menu, or uh, update the EEPROM, and boom, done. That's the big update that I that I am uh, working on in conjunction with the, uh, the big pack update that Michael has. Looking forward to seeing all this stuff out in the wild once we get the updates done, and I will see you again probably in another video where we build the new attenuator uh, with the metal shell and get everything stuffed into this new uh, enclosure. All right. Thanks. Take care.